Okay, let's do the cotangent. Um, again, keeping things relatively brief, just sort of hitting the highlights. I'm going a little out of order from the textbook. For some reason, the textbook sticks the secant and the cosecant in between the tangent and the cotangent. But I don't see much logic in that because the graphs of the tangent and the cotangent are pretty similar. So here's the tangent. We've already seen that graph. Here's the cotangent. It looks a lot like the tangent, but going the other way. So the tangent went up and to the right. The cotangent is going down and, well, also to the right. So like the tangent is the sine over the cosine. The cotangent is the cosine over the sine. So just like in the case of the tangent, this denominator function keeps being zero. And everywhere that it's zero, we get a vertical asymptote. Just like the tangent, the period here is pi. So here is a vertical asymptote at pi, a vertical asymptote at 2 pi, a vertical asymptote at 0. That is to say, pi units to the left of this vertical asymptote, a vertical asymptote at negative pi, and so on. So just as with tangent, let's jot down our executive summary. The cotangent. It has a period of pi. Just like with the tangent, the period is between the vertical asymptotes. A single period of the cotangent looks something like that, making allowances for my whole or artistic ability. Just as with the tangent, there are an infinite number of vertical asymptotes. They occur in different places, though. The vertical asymptotes occur at multiples of pi. And here n can be a positive or negative integer. So 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, and so on. And that's it for this video. Just as with the tangent, um, if we change the cotangent to 
a number of times the cotangent or a cotangent plus a constant. It behaves in very similar ways to the sine and the cosine. We'll put that off to its own video, though.